Good morning from a very, very chilly morning. And I feel like you guys always make fun of me when I say that, but it was 33 degrees this morning. So I think I have some right to say this morning. We are over here on the west coast of Florida out of Marco Island. Today we're fishing with our friend, Captain Tanner of Real Deal Fishing Charters. Say hi guys. Hello everyone. We got Ryan and Vic, Dennis. Tanner is currently throwing the cast net trying to catch some bait so that we can run offshore and today the mission is to try to catch some cobia. So we're trying to catch some pilchards right now. It's a little slow on the... Pinfish. Pinfish? Pinfish. We also have a, it's called a sugar trout. Catch those quite often in the winter time. So we're gonna hopefully catch some bait then run offshore. So wish us luck, I will see you out there. maybe like 15 minutes now, but in the first like five minutes, Ryan already caught a cobia, already have one in the boat on the ice. So mission accomplished for the day already. That was really fast. Oh no, it feels like a fish. Oh, it's coming to the surface. Man. That's the right kind. Yeah, it's a cobia. That's the right kind. Oh, God. Woo. oh that's cobia. Oh man, that's cobia. Go. We're all using different kinds of jigs and we're just dropping them down to the bottom, jigging them up fast, slow, just trying to figure out what works and hopefully we can catch some more cobia. I haven't caught a cobia in, honestly, I feel like 10 years or something. And the one time I did, it was actually with Ryan and Victor too. Oh my um, God, I remember that. That was on your birthday. Yeah, that was my birthday like literally like 10 years ago or Whoa, something crazy. That was a day. And I think that was the only cobia I think I've ever actually caught. So it'd be really cool if I actually can catch one today, but let's see what happens. So just dropping down to the bottom. Once I hit the bottom, I'm just gonna jig up and just keep doing the same thing. This cobia came up to the boat one time and Victor goes, look, a remora. And I'm like, that's not a remora, that's a cobia. And he's like, no, it's a remora. I'm like, it's a cobia. And then he caught it and actually was a keeper. <laughs> So is Ryan on the other side of the boat. Definitely bigger than a blue runner. That was like kind of right on bottom. Well, then maybe the school came through. What? Well, I expected it to be much bigger probably because, I expected it to be much bigger probably because I hooked it in the throat, but. This is a little Almaco Jack. You gotta let him go. See ya. Tanner, something to let go. Shark smoked that jig. What kind of shark is this? I don't know, he's all yellow. That looks good. Get him, Brooklyn. Fish? A blue skidoo. A blue skidoo. I have to change my friggin' lure tail again. A little blue fish, definitely not what I was expecting to catch, but he ate off uh, the tail. <sighs> he ate off the tail of my jig, so gotta replace that. These guys are toothy and not something good that you want to be catching when you got rubber lures. <laughs> See ya. Oof. So we made it. Oh, dude, we're oh, about oh. to get pooped on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um. Oh my God, look at it. It's coming, look. Oh. <laughs> that was so gross. Look out. I forgot, so, to, mention, I forgot to mention that it could happen. We made it to our new destination. 
So what we're fishing is an old Air Force relay tile. These things aren't used anymore, but they were for communication signals back in the day, and we're in the middle of nowhere. There's a bunch of them out here in the Gulf of Mexico. Yep. All right, Brookie. Woohoo! Well, we just pulled up to this tower, and this was our original plan to come here, but we stopped at the wreck first just to see how it was going. And that was my first drop down. Yeah, I cut I the spool and it broke off right away. What if it was well, a 65 pound cobia? It was definitely not. I don't know if I hooked a cobia and then maybe got eaten by a shark is what we're gonna guess happened. So that was disappointing. Never saw the shark. Don't know what kind it was, but oh, time to re rig. Just got sharks or something, man. Look at everybody re rigging right now. Yep, so, uh, all three of us broke off. I don't know if we're hooking sharks or if our cobia are getting sharked. What do you think? You had a cobia on, right? I think whatever I hooked did not get sharked. I think whatever I hooked was a shark. Okay. Mine kind of felt like it got um, eaten. I think yours definitely got eaten. Yours seemed like it changed significantly. Mine was not a shark at first. Mine was definitely a fish. There you go, there you go. Yeah, You're this <laughs> Yeah, one right? Yeah, he's yeah, up. Man, saw that fish swimming on the corner of the tower. Tanner pointed him out to me. Pitched out the swim bait in front of him. And he smoked it, man. He smoked it. Oh, I see him. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> go beyond. So we already have our limit. We got two keepers, so we're gonna let this guy go right here. Yeah, buddy, doubled up Let's on Cobia. Go. Me and Ryan. Sight fished on artificial with the crew, man. That is just sick. That could be that it. Good. That could be it, babe. That's what happens. You come out here and you lose a lot more than you catch. So that's been my day so far. <laughs> oh, that ate you right there. Chewing. Look at that. I've gone through so many swim baits today. So many different colors, so many different sizes. That was the first fish I caught on that one too, and he already broke it. All right, Brooke, go ahead and drop her down. All right, so I think we're at the last spot of the day. Um, I just dropped down a live bait with a little sinker so I stay on bottom. I'm 
Fingers crossed that this is my spot. We'll see. I just hit bottom. So now we're kind of just like slowly drifting. There's has not been a lot of current today, so we haven't been drifting very fast. surprise we are back home at the fillet table we got two cobia here i didn't catch my cobia but we still had an absolutely epic day out there it was the most perfect blue sunny day with not a cloud in the sky and the cobia limit is two per vessel so we actually did end up catching three Ryan caught these two and then Victor caught one that we actually released. And the cool thing about the way we were actually catching these is Tanner was netting them. So we didn't have to gaff them and then measure the fish after it was on the boat. The limit on these fish used to be 33 inches to the fork. So that's from the tip of the nose to the fork of the tail. Now they're 36 inches. So Tanner netted this one first. We measured it and I think it was like 38 or something inches. You never want to gaff first and then measure later. So Tanner had that giant net, which was very convenient to be able to measure them just in case. So it was really neat that at that tower, Ryan and Victor both sight casted their fish. They saw them swimming up top cast their jig and within seconds those things shot out and ate the jig so they were definitely hungry and now we're hungry to eat these bad boys up um, Victor's gonna flay one and then I'm gonna flay the second one so let's get to it so these are a very awkward shaped fish and they're a little bit hard to fillet I've actually never filleted a cobia before so Vic is actually going to cut the head off so it makes it easier for you to fillet because if you don't his head's flat his body's round so as soon as we get this one side off, it's gonna be going like this and seesawing back and forth. So best thing to do, gut it and cut the head off. And the guts smell really bad, so he's also going to gut it. I'm using an eight inch Dexter Tiger Edge. I like it for cutting the heads off fish and just getting through bone because it's serrated so it doesn't dull your uh, knife edge and it makes it really easy to cut through bone as well. So I got the gut cavity exposed. I'm going to go up the gut cavity right here. See all that? I mean that's literal poop that you don't want anywhere near your fillet so that's why we gut these fish before we fillet them. Smells great! What? I like to give Victor the dirty jobs. Yeah, I'm like Mike Rowe out here. <laughs> that was easy. That's yep. not bad. Quick work with this knife. So Victor heard he flayed the first cobia and its stomach was empty. You want to see if this one has anything in it? Yeah. And we always pop the eyes before we throw any kind of fish into the canal because they can hold up gases in their eyes and float and smell. So anytime you're filleting fish, and you're on a canal, it is a very kind thing to do for all your neighbors if you pop those fish eyeballs. And also if you cut out the stomachs because the stomachs can build up gases and float that reason as well. It's kind for yourself too. So you don't have to smell it. Oh, there's something in there. Eww. And you're not gonna be able to tell, that's so digested. Well, they were hungry. What is that? Oh my that? gosh, it looks like some type of worm, that tapeworm, is, parasite. Ew, it's so big. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Oof. It's a big one, right? That's a two footer. You ain't gonna eat that one, are you? Nope. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> Gross. So now we got the head off, helps it from rolling around. I just wanna show you one last thing on this cobia is check out these top spines here. These are literally spines. And these guys, when they get in the boat, sometimes they go crazy. And you gotta be careful that these spines don't get you when they're rolling around in the boat. Like I said, never filleted a cobia before, but we're gonna give it a try. 
give it a try. They got some thick skin. So get myself started in there first. And just go down the spine. And Victor used the Tiger Edge to cut the head off, a Dexter Tiger Edge. And this is a Dexter six inch flexible fillet knife. I like a nice small knife like this because it helps me just like, I don't know if it's because my hands are smaller, but I just feel like I have a lot easier time controlling the knife with a smaller knife. But that's yeah. just my opinion on it. These guys have a giant backbone. So what I'm currently doing is I'm just trying to get through to that backbone so then I can go around it. So as you can hear, the knife is hitting that backbone. Let's go out the tail here. So I've made it to the backbone and now I'm just going to go on top of it. And then once I get over it, I'm going to turn my knife. I'm going to angle my knife downwards to start going on the opposite side. Gotta get through some pin bones here. So right now I'm leaving the rib cage bones attached. But you'll see more when I have this off. time phalanocobia. As you can see they got this big backbone and I left the rib cage attached. I'm going to switch knives again. Now I'm going to use a Dexter 8 inch flexible fillet. This is a great knife for skinning fish. I'm actually going to cut this in sections to make it easier to fillet because this is such a long fish. So we'll do that. Push this out of the way. As always, you guys can save 20% with my code BROOK20 on DexterOutdoors.com. Okay. And I don't actually know what recipe I'm doing yet. I was kind of thinking about making some kind of fish chowder, which I've never done before, but yesterday it was just so cold that I was just craving some like warm soup. So I'm thinking that I may do a fish chowder, but I will see you guys in the kitchen to cook it up. So see you there. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So this is actually my first catch and cook of the new year. So happy new year to everyone. And before I start cooking, I want to quickly mention that this weekend, January 21st and 22nd, Victor and I will be at the Pompano Beach Nautical Flea Market. So hopefully you're seeing this video before then. I will be there selling my lobster nets. So if you guys wanna come stop by, help support me, buy a lobster net in person, buy a t-shirt, or just to come say hi to Victor and I, I would greatly appreciate it. We would love to see you there. So I will have the information linked down in the description just so you can find out where the Nautical Flea Market is. But we will be at booth 50 Blue A. So I'll have that in the description. But just come say hi, we'd love to see you. Now let's get to cooking. So. Victor actually made the cobia the other night baked and it was phenomenal. And like I had said, I was thinking about making like a fish chowder and that's what we're doing tonight. So we have our cobia cubed up here, all ready to go. And we're gonna just jump right into it. So moving on over to the stove. So the first thing I started with earlier was I cooked a whole pack of bacon and I kept all the fat in there. And surprisingly enough, I may have eat a few, but this is an entire pack of bacon, just in this little tiny jar. Keeping that bacon fat, we're going to go in now with two onions and, I don't know, like three stalks of celery. So those are gonna go in now. Now, as far as seasoning the fish goes, I'm gonna just do salt and pepper. I'm going to be serving my fish with some salad and bread. Basically like Olive Garden, you get soup, salad, and breadsticks. 
<laughs> so I always kind of make this same bread recipe. I've been making it since I literally was like, I don't know, six years old. It's really simple. I just like to take a nice loaf of French bread and start out with some melted butter. All right, we're going real basic garlic salt on the bread now. Real basic, huh? Yeah, like we're not trying to get fancy with some real garlic. Some lorries? We're going straight with garlic salt. Next, Parmesan cheese. We like the stuff out of a plastic container and nobody got time to grade fresh Parmesan cheese. I'm just kidding. If you have time, fresh Parmesan cheese is way better. And lastly, paprika. I always make this every time we do like a seafood pasta dish, like whenever we used to make crabs with my grandma, I always made this bread. But I think it'll pair well with our fish chowder. In the oven for, we like to eat it when it's like not super brown, so like maybe 10 minutes on 350, maybe a little longer if you like it a little crispier. As you can see, the celery and onions are nice and tender. Now we're going in with a large head of garlic. So now we're going to go in with some flour. And we're basically making a roux here. And this is gonna help us later on with our soup being slightly thicker. Now we're gonna cook this till we get rid of that like raw flour taste. Now we're gonna go in with two bottles of clam juice. Now we're working on getting that liquid up. Next, we're going in with some chicken broth. And we're gonna do this whole container. Next, we're gonna throw in a couple bay leaves and some fresh thyme. So I'm probably gonna have to raise this level of liquid, but I'm gonna go in with the potatoes next. This is six pretty small gold tomatoes. <laughs> I hope you leave this in the video. Come on, please oh. leave this in the video. Meg, don't make fun of me. Why are you making fun you of me? You said six small gold tomatoes. <laughs> Did I really? Yes. I didn't say potatoes? You said tomatoes. <laughs> so I said, please leave it in the video. Oh. Uh, I was like, why are you making fun of me? So that was six small diced potatoes. All right, adding in some water. So the potatoes have been in for 10 minutes and we salted to taste because it wasn't very salty. And now the fish is going in. All right, so our last step besides we're gonna add some corn, is to add in our heavy cream. And lastly, going in with a can of corn. I'm being a little gentle when I'm stirring this because I don't really want my fish to fall apart but I think they won't fall apart as easily because we cubed them the way that we did. All right, time to scoop up our soup. I am very excited for this. To finish it off, we're gonna top with a little paprika, little fresh parsley, and lastly, we're ending with where we started with that bacon. Ta-da! Cobia fish chowder. There's our finished bread. We got some Caesar salad and our beautiful Cobia fish chowder. Time to enjoy. All right, everybody, you can come. Chowder. Oh. Second chance at Cobia. Well, I think there's a lot of empty bowls. Uh, 
Fisher is the well-known soup critic of the family, but I think I can speak for everyone when I say that was a phenomenal, just absolutely unreal. You, you crushed your brook, and like you said, just a great cold weather meal, which has been kind of chilly, so it was really nice to get a change of pace, and I do love a good chowder, so well done. I'm excited for more Cobia, hopefully soon. Thank you. Jed had to show off his empty bowl, but I don't know if you could catch me with an empty bowl. I'm, I'm gonna have to be cut off tonight. I just can't <laughs> stop. I don't know how many I've, I've had so far. It's a, it's spectacular. I love clam chowder and I love this maybe more. It was very flavorful. The fish was tender and delicious. Just loved it, bro. Very good. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I had um, cobia for lunch here yesterday that Victor made. And uh, it was so delicious, it left me wanting more cobia. So when, when Brooke called today and said, you want to come over for more cobia? I was like, absolutely. And this, uh, this cobia chowder is delicious. Good job. Thank you. I think cobia was the perfect fish to do this with because it's, it stays nice and firm. You can't do this, I think, with a lot of fish because when you start to mix and move it around, so good call on that, Brookie. And I wanna see all you guys come support Brooke this Saturday and Sunday, Pompano Beach Nautical Flea Market. She's got a bunch of nets made over there in the corner. Come meet Brooke, come meet me, and uh, come support Brooke, get a net. Best nets on the market. Well, I think it was a success on the fish chowder. I really enjoyed it. It was pretty simple to make, and I think you could do this with a lot of different kinds of fish. This fish did stay together really well in the soup, but if you wanted to use something that was a little more of a flaky fish, like let's say a yellowtail snapper or something like that, it might fall apart more easily, so as long as you wouldn't mind, then I think you can make it with a lot of different kinds of fish. A big thank you to Captain Tanner for taking us fishing. If you guys are interested in booking a charter with him, I will have all his information linked down in the description. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.